many to one to many relationships and queries. Many times in a query in Microsoft Access, you will need to use more than two tables. When you're using more than two tables in Microsoft Access using the QBE grid, you need to determine the relationship between those tables in order to decide if you need to break up the tables or the query in more than one step. In this case, we have a many-to-one-to-many -to -one -to -many relationship between the tables. Many charges, one client, many payments. When we have a many-to-one-to-many -to -one -to -many relationship in Microsoft Access using the QBE grid, we cannot create a valid query in just one step. In other words, we can create this query, we can run it, but it will not display a valid Dynaset. However, if you're using a query with two or more tables, and the tables have a one-to-many-to-one -to -one relationship, then you can create a valid query using one step. Now this is true whether your relationship is an inner join or an outer join. Let's look at an example of a many-to-one-to-many -to -to -many relationship using an outer join. Here we want to write a query to summarize by client their total charges, total payments, and balance due. We want to list the client ID, the first name, the last name, the total charges, the total payments, and the balance. Now, if you would want to do this, you would pull up the three tables that you needed. I want to list all of my clients, so I'd have an outer join relative to the client table between the client and the charges, and an outer join relative to the client table between the client and payments table. I would fill in the QBE grid as you see below. And when I run that query, I would expect to have a Dynaset as you see on the right hand side of the screen. I would have one record per client and I would have the total charges, the total payments, and the balance due. Notice Nancy has two charges three payments, and if you add those together, then you get the resulting amounts in the data set. Notice Karen has one charge, but no payment. So she has 100 under the charges field. She has blank under the payments field. When you see a blank field, that is considered a null value. A null value does not, uh, it does not, con um, the contents doesn't have anything in it. It's nothing. It's, it's not spaces. There's not a value. It's just nothing. So if you see a record or a field, if you see a field here that does not display anything, then you can, know, you can consider the fact that that table does not con contain a, re um, a record for that instance. So for Karen, she has a null value in the payments, so that means she does not have any payments in the payments table. So we know what we want on the top left side of the screen. But what we get is a different story. If you look at the bottom right hand side of the screen, those values are incorrect. How do I know they're incorrect? If you look at the tables and you, you uh, sum up the values, you'll see that they are not correct values. So what happened? Well, when SQL executed the query, behind the scenes, something like this uh, was executed. And again, you would not see this. This happens when it's executed behind the scenes. It would take the clients table and it would join it with either the charges or the payments table. Right now, we're going to do the example with, char with uh, joining the clients table first, but it could be either one that's uh, joined first. So it takes the clients and the charges table, it joins them, and creates an intermediate Dynaset. It takes that intermediate Dynaset, joins it with the Payments table, and creates another intermediate Dynaset. Finally, it takes the final Dynaset, it aggregates your functions, it applies your expressions um, that you have calculated, and it creates a final Dynaset. So let's look behind the scenes and see how this works. Step one the client table and the charges table. It will take all the clients and matching records from the, ch the charges. If you notice in our intermediate Dynaset 1, 
every client has a charge, so it will display on that Dynaset. And again, if you have one or two or three charges, it will show up the records. So if you, Nancy has two charges, so it's going to show two records for Nancy. The next step, it takes the intermediate Dynaset, the first one, and it joins it now with the payments table. So for example, J7500 at the top record with Nancy, it will take the $100 there and it will join it with the J7500 record on the payments table, the first one. So if you notice at the bottom, Nancy has on the, on the Dynaset 2 will have charges of 100 and payments of 100. The next step, it takes that same first record from Intermediate Dynaset 1 and it matches it with the second record in the payments table. So now if you look down at the bottom, Nancy DeVolio will have charges of 100 and payments of 200 in this Dynaset. Finally, it takes J7500 and Dynaset 1, matches it with the third record in the payments table, and puts that in the Dynaset. Then it goes on to the second record in the Intermediate Dynaset, or Intermediate Dynaset 1. Nancy DeVolio has a 150 charge in Dynaset 1, uh, Dynaset in the payments table, she has 100 in the payment, so it will take those 150 and 100 and put that in the in intermediate Dynaset 2. Then it will take J7500 second record on Dynaset 1, match it with the second record on, Dynas on payments table, and put those in the Dynaset 2. And finally, it will take that second record from Dynaset 1, match it with the third record from the payments table, and display that in Dynaset 2. Nancy King has charges, but she doesn't have any payments. We are creating an outer join here, so um, Jennifer King will have only charges records and no payments. After it creates this intermediate Dynaset 2, it will aggregate your functions, it will uh, do the calculations, and your final Dynaset, which will displays when you run it, is shown at the bottom right hand side of the screen. If you look at those values, they're not correct. So therefore, this query does not run correctly. So how do we create this query? Well, we need to create it in multiple steps. We need to create a query that will do an outer join between the client and payments table, summarizing the payments by client. We need to create another query that will take the client and charges table, the outer join, summarizing the cha uh, charges by the client. Here's the QBE grid for the payments by client. Notice we have an outer join. We're grouping it by client ID, first name and last name, and we're summing the amount on the payments table. Then we have a charges by client. We're grouping by client ID, and we're summing the charges. If you notice here, we don't use the first name and the last name. The reason why we don't put that in the query is because we are going to use both of these queries and input to our final query, so we only need the first name and the last name on one query. And again, you see an outer join. The final step, it will take the payments by client query and the charges by client uh, query. You will take both of these queries and you will create a third query. Notice that you have a one-to-one -one relationship now, so you do not need any inner joins because the payments by client will have all the clients and the charges by client will have all the clients. The next thing we need to do in the grid is we want to um, join these tables. You have to manually drag the line between the client ID on one table to the client ID on the other table. It doesn't matter which way you drag it. You just have to drag that to join them because they will not automatically join because they are two queries. And in order to have the query run correctly, you have to join the tables. Notice down at the bottom I have payments by client, which is a one, charges by client, which is a one, a one-to-one -one to relationship. And again, you want to use an inner join uh, to get this to work correctly. So here's my QBE grid. My tables, payments by client and charges by client, those are the queries that I created. My join type is inner because I have all the records from both tables uh, have all the clients, so I don't have to worry about an outer join. 
and then I'm listing all the information. Notice I have two fields called sum of amount. One field is from the pay payments query and the other field is from the charges query. So when I calculate the balance, I have to tell Access what table I'm using. Now the only time you have to tell Access, or you have to use the table name, or the query name, which is the table in this case, is when you have fields that are exactly the same, if they're named the same, um, and they are shown in your QBE grid, because Access would not know which field to use. So notice I have charges by client, I have it in brackets, and I have an exclamation point. This tells Access that it's the table name. Exclamation point uh, tells it now. I'm going to give you the field name, and it's surrounded in brackets. Charges by client. Exclamation point. Sum of amount. I'm going to subtract that by the sum of amount in the payments by client table. Notice I have brackets around payments by client, and then I have an exclamation point, which tells Access now uh, we have the field name. Notice also on the grid I have balance asterisks and then I have the calculation at the bottom. When we're creating uh, big calculations on the QBE grid, uh, sometimes you don't have enough room. So just put it at the bottom of the grid. And there is our final data set. Now, Karen Day, if you notice, was charged $100. excuse me, yes, $100, but she didn't make any payments, so she should have a balance of 100 She has a balance of a null value. It's blank. We will find out why it's blank and how we can fix that in another lecture.